Hi everyone, um, this is our very first poem that we're going to be getting into today. Um, so I wanted to give you all some background on the poem that we're going to start off with, and it's called Mother to Son by Langston Hughes. Um, and this is Langston Hughes over here. So let's go ahead and give you guys some background on Langston Hughes. Um, he was born in Joplin, Missouri in 1902. Um, when his parents divorced, when he was younger, he was raised by his grandma until he was 13. And then after that, he went and moved in with his mother in Illinois. And I think that's where he stayed the majority of his childhood. And then he went to a whole bunch of different places for college, um, which is where he learned how to write poetry and where he became really talented. Um, he published his first book of poetry in 1926. Um, and he is known for his how he portrays um, um, African Americans and black life in the US from the 20s to the 60s in his poetry. Um, and he became really recognized as an author and a literary figure during the Harlem Renaissance. Um, so being black in the 20s, just to give you guys some more background on why his subject matter is kind of focused around um, you know, his people, their struggles and stuff like that is because of the year and the time period that we were in as far as when Langston Hughes was alive and writing. Um, so just to give you some background on that, there were 12 million African Americans living in the United States in the 1920s. And of those 12 million, 75% of them lived in the South. Um, and this was during the time of the Jim Crow laws. And if you're not familiar with what the Jim Crow laws are, Basically, the idea was separate but equal, and I put equal in quotation marks because um, they weren't really equal. It really, it was segregation um, of public places. So essentially, um, if like there were different schools, so there were black schools and there were white schools, and white schools were always had better opportunities, better education, um, better everything compared to black schools. Um, there were separate movie theaters, movie theaters for white folks, movie theaters for black folks, water fountains were segregated, um, churches, um, libraries, all of that, right, were all segregated. And usually um, African Americans received the short end of the stick when it came to segregation. Um, it was also extremely difficult for African Americans to vote during this time. In order to vote, they had to pay a tax and had to pass a literacy test. And as I told you before, black schools were not um, as well equipped or as good as white schools. So a lot of African-American children and adults um, were not very good readers and so therefore did not pass a liter literacy test most of the time. There was also a law called the Grandfather Clause that said that anyone whose grandfather was a slave also could not vote. So I just want you to sit and think about um, like how common that would have taken place. Um, and this is even after um, the bill was passed for, I'm sorry, no it's not, I, I lied. Um, this is before the um, Civil Rights Act was passed. Um, this is kind of what is leading up to the civil rights movement taking place is um, the Jim Crow laws and um, the segregation of public places. So um, Langston Hughes was growing up in this environment, constantly being separated, um, having less opportunities to really succeed and do well as compared to an, a white man or any other white person. Um, so with that being said, I told you before that Langston Hughes became a recognized literary figure during the Harlem Renaissance. And what the Harlem Renaissance was, it took place during the 20th century, early 20th century. Um, it was called the New Negro Movement. And essentially the Harlem Renaissance um, was a chance for black culture, black artists to really be recognized and receive credit for stuff that they've done. So I'm sure to, I'm sure you've heard of just like Renaissance in general. Um, that's like a time period in our history way, way back when. Um, and essentially it was a coming together of art and music and culture and performance um, that and like celebrating the people that were really, really good at doing those things. So the Harlem Renaissance was basically 
the African American version of this. Um, so it took place in the early 20th century, like I told you, um, and it lasted basically the duration of the 20th century. And it began in the Harlem neighborhood in New York City. So that's where it got its name. And Harlem is really noted, noted for being a black neighborhood, um, again, which is where we get a lot of these African American culture. Um, is considered the golden age in African American culture that display that was displayed through literature, music, performance art, and art in general. Um, and it was again a time where black artists and authors were finally getting recognized and receiving credit for their work. So Langston Hughes really thrived in this environment, and this is when he was officially recognized as a prominent literary figure. And which is again why we're still reading him today. Um, so some themes that we're going to be seeing. Uh, Mother to Son is probably one of his more um, well-known poems that Langston has wrote. Um, but again, he is a very popular um, author of poetry. And um, I'm sure you would not have a hard time finding anything written by him. Because he's written a lot of stuff. But we're going to focus on Mother to Son. And some themes that we're going to be talking about are facing life's hardships, dignity, and determination. Um, never giving up hope and the hardships of being black in the United States. And obviously these will make more sense when we start reading. I just want you to keep these in the back of your head. Um, some literary devices that we're going to be talking about and looking at um, include imagery, which is um, another name for the sensory details that I think we've talked about before. I'm not sure. But just to give you a quick recap, imagery or sensory details are used to appeal to the reader's five senses to help create a more vivid picture. So just think of um, like when an author talks about like the feeling of the sun on their skin or the smell of whatever food the character is cooking, right? Those, those types of details appeal to our five senses and they help us get a more clear picture in our brain of exactly what the author is trying to describe. Um, an illusion with an A, not an I, is a direct reference to something historically, culturally, or literary significant. Um, literarily significant, I'm sorry. That word is very hard to pronounce. So it's basically when, um, like, one piece of, like, a, a text, a book, a novel, a poem, what have you, references something historically, culturally, or literarily significant that has happened before. And we're going to see this in our poem. A metaphor, and I know you guys know what these are, but if just to recap again, is a figure of speech that compares two things um, using like or as for the most part, right? Um, so we're going to be comparing some things. There is a metaphor, a very large and extended metaphor in the poem that we're going to be reading. And finally, we've got some symbolism. And we've talked about symbolism before. But again, to remind you, um, is when an average everyday object is used to represent something else. So, for example, um, the dove, right? That is used to represent peace. Um, what else? Um, 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 um. The stereotypical heart is used to represent love. Stuff like that. Oh, did I skip one? No, I did. Okay, sorry. All right, then we have poetic devices. Now, there's a difference between literary devices, which we can see in all types of literature. So novels, um, movies, books, uh, poems, right? Those, are, those span the entire genre of literature. Now, poetic devices are specific only to poetry. And what we're going to be looking at um, are these three right here. So free verse, and we talked about that um, yesterday in our notes about the specific type of poetry that free verse is. Mother to Son is a free verse poem. It doesn't have a specific rhyme scheme or stanza pattern, but it does have meter and that's what makes it a free verse poem. And that'll make more sense when we start reading the poem. Um, there's a lot of repetition in this poem. Um, and what's going to be repeated is this line right here, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. And the repetition of this is what gives the poem a musical quality. And again, this will make more sense when we start reading. Um, and finally, refrain. And this is when a line is repeated, but there's some distance between where it's being repeated. Um, and again, make more sense when we start reading. Just some things I want you to keep in mind. Um, so that kind of brings us to the end of this particular um, 
introduction to our poem. Um, so how this is going to work then is you are going to read the poem first by yourself. Then when we meet for Zoom, we'll read it together, and then we will listen to um, an, a YouTube video of a woman reading the poem herself um, as they think it should be read. And hopefully it'll give you guys some kind of, you know, an understanding of how this is going to work. So I will see you all for our Zoom call, um, and thank you.